Oh no, 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 no. PC building is not dead, especially in 2022. For example, this PC over here that I have built comes in at $2,158 precisely. But you might be saying, didn't you say in another video that this PC can be built for around $1,500? And yes, you're absolutely right. And that's the wonder of PC building. You can configure it to your needs and to your budget. I just liked a few extras and wanted to have a color theme and maybe spend out a little bit more on the motherboard because I'm a creator. But hey, let me show you how you can get this PC for $1,500 while PC building is not dead and why pre-built PCs are absolutely ripping you off and you're better off building your own because you're going to get better performance, lower cost. And then on top of the cherry, I'm going to show you some of the benchmarks that really blow your mind. Motion Array is a fantastic tool for creators to make better videos and faster. Motion Array has over 600,000 premium quality templates, presets, plugins, music and sound effects, stock video and photos. In a nutshell, it is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Configure the membership to suit your needs. Pay annually, monthly, cancel anytime you want. And enjoy your unlimited downloads. Not sure about Motion Array? Go try out the hundreds of free assets available on the website. Check out Motion Array in the video description below. So first of all, my CPU over here, $295. RAM, $250 for 64 gigabyte. You wanna get 32 gigabytes? $120. My motherboard over here is $289, which is the best DDR4 motherboard for 12th gen, but you can get an MSI B660, M mortar for $179 and also if you are a creative cloud user I highly recommend you check out ASUS ProArt B660 creator motherboard because you're gonna get three months for free for your creative cloud membership so if you take this off of this motherboard price which is $239 you're gonna get this even cheaper than all of the other motherboards I just mentioned. PSU $75 but you can easily get a $70 PSU with even better specs. SSD $209 for PCI Gen 4 2 terabyte SSD, but you can easily get a Gen 3 NVMe for $100 for one terabyte. My cool over here is roughly $45, but you can get a white Vetro V5 for around $30. The case is around $95 and cheaper if you find it on a deal. The GPU is $800 on Amazon and I'm not even dry. Just have a look over here. I can see this Zorta Gaming RTX 3060 $800 over here and this exact same one over there. If you want it a bit cheaper you can get it for 770 or i found some even cheaper on amazon if you want to go ebay or other places you might get it for even less the extra fans rgb fans that i have over here are 100 pounds these are the arctic argb fans and that's very cheap for six argb fans so if you want to cheap out a little bit this will come in at 1659 dollars with 12600k and if you want to get the creative cloud membership then that's going to come off it so you might get it even cheaper if you want to swap out your cpu for 12400 you're going to get it close to $1,500, but I highly advise you against that because you're going to lose a lot of performance. But what about the pre-builds then? And very quickly, you start to see that this is a very good option. So let's start. I put the same specs or as close to the same specs as this one to see how much the pre-built PC would cost. So I'm here at iBuyPower over here and let's have a look at the details over here. 12600K, 240mm AIO because you can't go any less, 64GB of RAM as we have over here, RTX 3060, motherboard which is much worse motherboard than what we have over here, 700W 80 plus power supply, okay that's fine but it's a random make that you'll never know how well this is going to do, 2TB of SSD over here and look at the total price, $2,500. $300 more expensive. Let's move on to Origin. Put together this one over here, exactly the same case, 12600K, motherboard, much worse motherboard, 64 gigabyte of Corsair Vengeance, 4 times 16 gigabytes, it's not as good as 2 times what I have over here. They offer us a liquid cooling, but we couldn't get it any cheaper because there's no other options. 3060, two terabyte approved by Samsung SSD, a 750 watt power supply because there isn't anything less. It's a little bit overkill. You don't need that much. Even 650 is like way above it. And look at that, 2,800 
and eleven dollars that's over six hundred dollars more nzxt build two thousand seven hundred and eight as you can see they don't even offer us 12th gen over here i couldn't find 12th gen pc options so 11 900 kf which is much worse cpu for our case that we have over here the 12 600 k is much better to have the f variant i'm not even gonna get started on that we have 32 gigabytes of ram much less we have a bit better gpu but this pc is still much much worse because the cpu is the main thing when it comes to video editing and we're 500 dollars more expensive and a ridiculous case that just chokes every single component that's inside let's move on to amazon and it looks like it might be getting a little bit better look at this gaming pc over here 1700 dollars for rtx 3060 and 12600k at first looks like wow that's a pretty good deal we should go for it right okay let's have a look a little bit closer 16 gigabytes of ddr4 massive bottleneck in your creative pc 240 millimeter aio they don't tell us which aio this is it could be absolutely rubbish we don't know they don't tell us which motherboard we're using and which ssd we're using they only tell you one terabyte gen 4 ssd but you might be still saying but that looks pretty good tell me where is the airflow in this case completely solid front panel where is the air coming in you're absolutely gonna choke every single component inside this, your case look even on the side there's absolutely nothing inside there this is not recommended at all this is just the suicide mission for a pc and no wonder this cost so little because the motherboard's going to be whatever you don't know what it is it's an absolute gamble and i would not advise you to go for this that's why building your own you choose the high quality components and you get a much better pc let's have a look at this cyber power pc around 1800 dollars now 10700 f 16 gigabytes of memory rtx 3060 hard drive and ssd that i don't know who buys that sort of things because this is so overpriced the ram is even 3000 megahertz this is ridiculous. This should be much, much cheaper. Our system's gonna absolutely wipe the floor with this 10700F. Okay, found another one over here. Skytake Shadow 3.0 gaming PC, right? First of all, airflow non-existent apart from this little bit over here. Yes, we have some RGB, but come on. This RGB looks ridiculous, first of all. But just have a look at this. We have 16 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz RAM, 9700 KF. And we're paying 2200 for it. Guys, please don't make these mistakes. I don't know who buys that sort of stuff. This is so overpriced. Let's have a look at another one over here. This is 2021 HP Omen over here. 3060 Ti and Ryzen 7 5800X. Okay, a little bit of a better GPU and a bit worse CPU. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM, massive bottleneck in our system, one terabyte SSD, we don't know what SSD is, most likely Gen 3, two terabyte hard drive, which I'm probably gonna charge you a lot more than it's worth it, liquid cooling. This is pre-built PC, but I'll promise you when you benchmark that PC against ours, ours is gonna do a much, much better job. 16 gigabytes of RAM is very, very little. Only when you do gaming, maybe that's enough. As soon as you go into creative tasks like what we are doing over here, massive bottleneck in your system. And for that amount of money, you would be able to build this and put $100 in your pocket and have a much better system. And then you're wondering, okay, maybe let's go to the guys who actually make creative PCs, Puget Systems. They have this 12th gen available over there. You can do it over here. And the lowest one they offer is 12700K. And I'm not blaming them. This is a great PC, but this is going to set you back $3,700. This is not a bad system over here. This is very, very good. But to get a budget system for that amount, there is not an option over there. And that's why you should be building your own PC like this one over here, because it's so good. But how good it is, let's have a look at the benchmarks then. So now I've got some of the benchmarks over here that I've been doing with this PC. First of all, Photoshop. So you can see the overall score and other bits of the benchmark over here and how I'm doing these, calculating the average and so on. It's 1168 points. So wondering how does that line up? According to my other benchmarks, this is Ryzen 9 5900X territory. That's a 12 core CPU with RTX 3070, by the way. And by territory, I mean they're literally within 1% of each other. Lightroom Classic, very similar story, 5900X territory. Now, when we move to Premiere Pro, some people might say, ah, you should just get the M1 Pro device, whether it's MacBook Pro or, you know, if the future ones come on something else, just get that one because it's just so much better at doing this. Well, let's have a look at that. I've got my Premiere Pro benchmark score over here from Budget Systems on the left side. This is our system. 
system 12600k 3060 graphics over there our ram aero g z690 so this is our system over here and then on the other side we have m1 pro with 16 core gpu 16 gigabytes of ram macbook pro blah 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 let's have a look at this one now 1051 standard over a score for the macbook m1 pro 1107 and you might be saying hey macbook pro is better and it is slightly better yes absolutely for a laptop that's absolutely amazing for the price point that is not amazing macbook pro as you can see over here comes in around two thousand and five hundred dollars so that's extra three hundred dollars on top and some people might say oh, but yeah but you get a keyboard and you get a nice mouse and you get the whole system you get the battery you get the screen that's very good and yeah for three hundred dollars that's okay but if that is stretching your budget and you might want something that is seventeen hundred dollars that's almost thousand pounds less expensive there's nothing like that out there and if you're home i don't see a reason why you should go with laptop if the portability aspect is not an issue for you if the portability is obviously important for you go for macbook but what i'm trying to tell you this is let's have a look at some of the benchmarks more in detail over here standard exports go over here we're literally neck to neck with Within one point of each other so that's that the macbook pro is better at standard live playback and that's where it gets a lot of its points from so if you're using the prores for example it's got encoders for that to use that and it's a 264 and it's just 265 now i'm not sure if the m1 devices can decode all of the hisha 265 codecs still that's very impressive score in our case it's a little bit lower but it's still very 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 good and what gets interesting is effect score that's cpu effect score we are five points better now but the big thing comes in here on the gpu the m1 pro over here the gpu score is 35.4 and ours is more than double the score and the gpu score over here measures the gpu accelerated effects which in Premiere Pro is Lumetri color, for example, color grading and other effects, something like that. So if you're doing a lot of color grading, a lot of things on top of each other, something like that, then this system might be the better option for you unless you're working a lot with ProRes systems, then the M1 Pro is better. As you can see, this PC over here is very much neck to neck with this M1 Mac over here. And the overall performance is within 5% of each other, yet the GPU performance is twice as good on our case over here. And bear in mind, even this configuration here comes in $300 cheaper, but also you could get the same performance a lot cheaper if you go with some of the cheaper components. Let's have a look at After Effects over here. On After Effects, we're getting 980 points in overall score. And as you can see, some of these are going even over 1,000, but it's the average of four tests over here. Let's have a look at some of the other bits that have been, you know, posted over here. This Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core with 32 gigabytes of RAM, RT RTX 3080, which is much more powerful over here. Exactly the same benchmarks as we have over here. The score is 960. If we have a look at this bit over here, this Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM. So half the amount of hours, but much better CPU and GPU which are the main things in After Effects as well. RAM makes a difference as well. 1016, we're not far off of this one. Very impressive in After Effects. And looking at the DaVinci Resolve performance over here, it's very impressive as well, 1272. That's the same territory as Ryzen 9 5900X with RTX 3070. So then, as you can see, PC building in 2022 makes sense then more than ever. And if you think that all the other options are more appealing, we might need to look a little bit closer at what are some of the building options over here because it's much better to build your own system. First of all, it's cheaper. Second of all, you can choose better quality components, make it look whatever you want without being stuck with a ridiculous case or some cheap power supply, motherboard or RAM components that you just can't get rid of. And you can get a killer upgrade path even in the future one where you want to upgrade any of your components. Like this motherboard is absolutely killer, killer motherboard. So many fast USB connecting ports, so much RAM capacity available. You can put even an i9 over there, 12900K, and then your system's gonna be even double the performance, some cases, which is ridiculous. So my friends, I'd love to know from you what your thoughts are in the comment section below. As always, all the links that I talked about are in the description below. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.